So we cannot grow weary. That's why Paul admonishes the Galatians, let us not grow weary while doing good. We're supposed to be doing good. Good works is not a bad thing. Uh, internal security proponents want to say, you can't do any works. Works are bad. Works are not bad. Works are good. As a matter of fact, the Bible glorifies good works. That is a means of your salvation, but as a product of the fact that you have been born again, the fact that you are sanctified, the fact that you want to apply good works to your life and reject the works of the flesh, uh, the lust of the eyes, the boastful pride of life, all the things that the Bible says are, are not of the Father but are of the world. Uh, it says that in due season, and what due season? At the end of our inheritance. When we're reaping, we die in this condition. We endure to the end. We're going to reap eternal life. This is what we live for. This is what being blood bought, born again of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is about. Is for us to receive something that the world can never offer you. That's why the Lord said that he that uh, who shall profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul. It doesn't matter what you gain out there. It's about reaping eternal life. And According to the Apostle Paul, everlasting life is something that we yet have to reap. Uh, we are not in eternal life yet. We possess eternal life. We have the hope of eternal life. But we can't lose heart. We can't grow weary. We have to fight this good fight of faith. And it's a good fight of faith. Just like Paul told Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Uh, lay hold on eternal life. We have something far better for us that out outweighs the persecutions. It doesn't matter how far... You have to go to endure your life, even if it costs you your own physical life, so that you don't deny the Lord Jesus, and you endure the persecution, you endure the laughter, and the mocking, and the scourging, and all those things. Because there is eternal life laid up for you, as long as you continue. Uh, so, finally I would like to present... Colossians chapter 1. Uh, this is really the first time that I read uh, the word if was in this uh, book here. And we'll go ahead and start, read from verse 21 to 23. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works... Yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue, continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Another tremendous and devastating passage uh, that is a blessing to those who have a heart to know the truth about our condition before God, how we remain faithful, uh, which says that, and you who once were alienated and enemies in your mind, because before you come to Christ, that's what you are. You are an enemy of God. The Bible says those who are friends of the world have become enemies of God uh, by wicked works. Yet now, here's the contrast, yet now he has reconciled. How? In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach. What a greater, can be even a greater contrast than that. I mean, we, we've been bought by His blood. Uh, because of the sacrifice of Jesus, He presents us holy and blameless and above reproach. But is that all? Is that all there is to it? Is, is that it? Uh, is that all there is to know about uh, being forgiven and being justified before God? Knowing what it takes to be justified is, is, is part of the equation, yes. But what is the rest? What's the other side of the coin? Well... Verse 23 gives it to you. And Paul says here that we will be presented above reproach in his sight if. That should stand you still. Uh, the first time I read this I said if. If what? Well, if you continue. Not if God continues for you. Uh, if you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast. We have to remain grounded. We have to remain steadfast and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel which you heard which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Uh, this again is referring to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2, which Paul says, by which gospel you are saved if you continue. 
uh, in the word that I have preached you, otherwise you believed in vain. Uh, according to this uh, chapter and verse here, it's proclaiming the same message. Uh, you have to remain grounded and steadfast in order to present, for the Lord to continue to present you blameless and above reproach. Uh, and the possibility of here is saying, not moved away from the hope of the gospel. So it's possible to be moved away from the hope of the gospel. How? By the influences of the world, by false teaching, by presenting you with the option that it doesn't matter once you've made your profession for Christ, you can't be moved away from the gospel, you can't be plucked out of his hand, and uh, numerous other scriptures that are com taken completely out of context that say that even though, even the most grievous sins that you could commit, uh, the Lord's going to kill you and take you to heaven. And, and all these things, they don't make any sense. If you weigh them in comparison to these scriptures, and you read through the Bible, and you get to these these very warnings that are given to Christians by the Apostle Paul and by Peter are warnings. Beware, brethren. Uh, watch, therefore, brethren. Stand fast. Don't move. Uh, remain steadfast. Fight the good fight of faith. These are words of encouragement and urgent messages for us to continue. Don't let nothing sway you. Don't let false teachers sway you. Why do you think the Lord said in, in Matthew 24 that false teachers and false prophets will arise to deceive, if possible, even the elect? Why? Because it's possible for the elect to be deceived. This is not an impossibility for you to become born again, to be abiding in the doctrine, to be truly blood-bought born again, and to be deceived by something. And what's the antidote? Right here the scriptures. This is our antidote. Our antidote is to heed the very warnings that the apostles gave to us. We're supposed to take very seriously the warnings. And not only the warnings, but also the safeguards that give us the ability to overcome this deception. You don't have to have a degree in theology. You don't have to become an uh, ordained pastor. All you have to do is have a willingness and a pure heart to, to receive the word by faith and be purified by it. And guard yourself and remain faithful to the Lord, knowing that these things will come to you. And you will be tested, but you don't have to succumb to the temptation. You have to understand that the devastation of what sin really does to your lives and to your soul. And to heed these warnings will be of tremendous benefit. To not heed them will, will render you foolish. And you'll give heed to different doctrines and different spirits. And you'll give heed to the easy believism that's in the world. This is why it's very hard to find a congregation. It's very hard to find a church that teaches you such things that make you look inwardly to give you the thought that you need to remain pure before God. And if you can't find a church like that, well then you make a church out of your living room. And you sit down by yourself or with your wife or with your family and you go to the Bible. And you read what the scriptures really have to say. And become a true Berean. Uh, the final verse I like to go to is uh, Romans. Chapter 8. Uh, another condition here, if you haven't dove and sunk your teeth into the book of Romans, uh, this book is uh, absolutely loaded with doctrines that will, that will edify your life. And uh, this book, I believe, is really designed for their... It's like the handbook to Christians of, of uh, knowing what what carnally minded is and what it means to live according to the flesh and in this passage go ahead you can read it 813 for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live uh, twice uh, this conditional word if appears in this verse for if you live according to the flesh who if who lives you Christians, you Christians in Rome, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. How will you live? You will have eternal life. According to Galatians, you will reap it. 